Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Revive. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to Earth. It is 5,000 years after the fall of man, and for the last several millennia, we have all been living underground and um, changing and evolving. And now, Finally, the ice has begun to thaw. You can see all these starter tiles, and we are going to emerge and revive. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run-through, which means I'll be taking on the faction of the Hofstadterians instead of the uh, uh, Kunaban or the Nadir or uh, Nadir or uh, the um, o, uh, OX49. Each faction has a different uh, belief about what brought about the end of man, uh, which means they all have unique special abilities that kind of reflect who they are. The Hofstadterians, they are really all about the water. Uh, their quote is, oh, what is it? Let's go on ahead and take a closer look at them before we get going. Their quote is, let the waters rinse. That's what they are all about. And um, that means, as a basic special thing, for every water source that I have um, adjacent to on the surface, I can generate resources. Something that I can do, whereas other players can maybe convert excess food into points or just generate more knowledge, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then I've also got several upgraded abilities I can unlock over the course game as well, as the members of my faction start to repopulate the surface. So, um, I should say, this, you can see this little slot, it's supposed to slot right here into my player board, like that. But I'm trying to get everything to fit on screen. So, I'm just going to leave it up there, and we'll take another look at it again once I'm ready to use my special ability. Every player starts with a deck of six starter cards, three of which are Reston. These were randomly um, basically discarded. So, I've actually got three members of my little society ready to go. This robot, uh, this uh, nadir type, and this uh, yellow person, and I'm going to be using them pretty soon to repopulate the surface. One last thing before I get going, though. We've got a big old deck of objective cards, and when you start playing, everybody draws two and picks one. So let's see what my options are that will specify what it is I'm really trying to seek out. Okay, I could be going for trying to collect the crystals on the outer edge of the board, which means I need to expand and get over to them as best I can. I could be trying to recruit more specialists, or I could be trying, and or I could be trying to open up more ancient crates full of goodies. That's if I take this one. If I take this one, then I want to get next to more water. Hey, that's kind of my jam. I kind of like that one. Oh, and I want to get more of my uh, faction members, my little meeples, up on the board. And I want to do more upgrades. So I've got to pick one of these. Uh, if I were playing multiplayer, this would be secret. Nobody would know what actions it is that I particularly prefer. Hmm... Yeah, I, I feel like this one was made for me. We love the water. Let the waters rinse. Um, so let's say that is my objective, which again would be face down. I could look at it anytime I want, but I'm just going to leave it face up uh, since I'm playing solo today. Now, when you are playing a multiplayer game on your turn, you will get to do two of these actions. And usually the main actions you want to do is play your follower cards to get access to their abilities. Or you can activate your machine with this wonderful little kachunk switch, which Jen and I always like to make the kachunk sound every time we activate it. Or we can explore, build, or populate the surface. And on your turn, you're going to do two of these things. And now if you can't or don't want to do one or two of these things on your turn, instead you can hibernate, which is kind of like a reset. It, this is how you get your exhausted cards back into your hand and you get your energy back. You work your way up the hibernation track and all of that. This is something you do every once in a while. Now that's
That's if you're playing a multiplayer game. On your turn, you'll either do two of these actions, the same one twice or whatever, or you will hibernate. In the solo game, it's a little different. Instead of racing against other players to try to expand and um, you know build on the surface as best we can, because the more of these tiles we flip, the more really cool opportunities will open up and everybody's racing to get to them. In the solo game, instead of racing against players, I'm racing against a clock. This token, once it hits down to 20, once I have done 20 actions worth of stuff, the game will be over. So, I'm still in a rush. I'm still trying to get as many points as I can. If I don't make it to at least 50 victory points before the 20 uh, turn clock is over, then I don't win. And if I can do better than 50, then I get um, you know ranked on how well I did. So, uh, like I said, but the core actions I do, whether I'm playing solo or multiplayer, are exactly the same. On my turn, I have access to all of these actions. So, let's start reviving. And I think the first thing I need to consider is I need to get to more water spaces. Let's look at the board a little bit more. Randomly, as part of setup, these tiles were laid out. I can see there is already one water source, which gives me a bonus of a free upgrade tile. These are awesome, incredibly powerful. Um, and if I look at this one, and this one, you can see these are all uh, face down. I don't know exactly what's on the other side of these tiles, but I do know, to explore this one, I need to spend five food, I will get five victory points, I will recruit somebody, and on the other side of this tile, there's going to be another water source. And there's one here. Uh, these tiles don't have any water. These tiles have ancient ruined cities, which are sources of great knowledge that we can go and get. And that's how I get more people, uh, more of my followers up on the surface. If I, this is actually kind of tricky now that I think about it. Hey, I want to visit lots of water sources, but I also want to get lots of my people on the surface. So that means I got to get to these water sources, but I got to get to these cities that are scattered all over the place too. Uh, and randomly, again, as part of setup, there's a city, there's a city, there's a city, city, or again, these are ruined ancient cities, which we can start repopulating. And wouldn't you know, let's see. So these water are fairly close to the entrance. Um, but this city over here is surrounded by a bunch of water. So I really need to start thinking about which way do I want to expand? Do I want to head off in this direction, which gets me access to some water and some cities? If I head off towards this one, they're a little bit closer, but then there's no cities over here. Uh, there is access to crystals, but remember, I didn't take the objective that wants me to get more access to these outer limit crystals. So I think it makes sense that I want to kind of expand in this direction, hit these water sources, and maybe get to some of these cities based on my particular objectives. Right. But the problem is... It's expensive to revive the world. To explore all these different tiles costs food and often knowledge as well. I generally need food to be able to reach those areas and extend my range. And once I've actually flipped these things to populate them, I need more knowledge to get my people in there and to be able to build buildings in all of these spots so that I can harvest more resources, including the bonuses of the water, which again is one of my objectives. I need a lot of gear. And at the beginning of the game, I don't have much. I have one measly crystal as the first player. If I were playing a multiplayer game, the second player would have a crystal and a gear, and the third player and the fourth player would have a little bit more to make up for being later in turn order. But solo, I've got one crystal. And anytime I want, I can convert that crystal into a... I convert this crystal into a gear, or a book, or a food. Um, but that's not going to be enough to get anything done. So I think, for starters... I need to start using my followers. And each one of these cards is a multi-use card. They've got actions on the top and the bottom. <clears throat> this little B just means, hey, I grabbed the B starter deck. There's an A, B, C, and a D. Um, everybody starts in the basic game, I should say, with the same um, starting deck of cards. Interestingly, I before I go any farther, since I mentioned that, I should say... The game comes with a five-chapter campaign you can play through, uh, where every time you play a game, you'll read story snippets that teach us more about who we are, what our beliefs are, what we're trying to achieve, and also, slowly, over the course of the game, unlock more and more features. You can see, actually, the game comes with two of these tokens that say, do not touch this punch board until you're instructed to do so, because you play through the campaign. Now, if you're a player who doesn't care about campaign, 
campaigns, you could just say, ah, to heck with it, I don't care about this, and just, you know, go right into this deck, skip right to the parts that explain, hey, unlock this, unlock that, unlock the other thing, and, um, you know, just go right into the deep end of the pool. Um, I'm actually still playing with kind of the basic setup. I have not unlocked any of the uh, special types of terrain tiles, or the extra bonus factions. I'm still playing with the starting four factions. Right, so, uh, but there is more and more and more stuff. New types of followers, all kinds of things that you can unlock over the course of the campaign, or you can just say, tech of the campaign, I'm just going to unlock it all right from the get-go. Um, right, so, anyway, 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 these are my three followers. I could play this card to get two food, or to get one upgrade. Um, by either using the top or the bottom action. I could play this card to get one crystal, and remember, crystals are wilds. So they can stand in for anything. Or I could get a food and a gear. Uh, the food I need to extend my range and explore, the gear I need to build. I could play this card to get a uh, knowledge or a book, which I need to train my followers and let them you know, occupy the old ancient cities and another gear to build. Or I could play it for its bottom effect, which says, hey, convert any three resources into any other three resources. Now, that's not particularly useful right now, because I only have one resource and it's already a wild. So this one doesn't necessarily make as much sense. But for my first action, remember, these are the things I can do. I can play my followers to um, activate their abilities. I can activate my main machine. And the base thing that does is it lets me immediately take any one resource. Now, that's if you're playing the first chapter of the game. One of the very first things that's unlocked as you go through the campaign, though, is upgrading this ability. And I am playing... Well, should I play with the upgrade ability or should I just treat this? No, I'll play with the upgrade ability. If you um, play with the upgraded ability of this switch, it either lets you generate any one of the basic goods that you might need right when you need it, and then ka -chunk, it's turned off for a while, or it lets you copy the top action of a card that another player has already played. So if I were playing a two-player game and Jen had played this to get some, um, you know, to get a book and a gear, I could, on my turn, I could go ka -chunk, and I could copy her card and get a book and a gear as well. And she would get a huge benefit from it also because it means this card would then um, no longer block a worker placement spot. These cards are effectively multi-use worker placement cards because... If I choose to play one of these, I've got to slot it into either of these two slots, which means I use the top action, or in either of these two slots, which means I use the bottom action. But either way, once I've done that, I can't activate this slot again. But if some other player were to try to copy me and um, use that ability, then they'd be helping me out because this card would then go to the discard pile waiting to be grabbed when I hibernate, and suddenly I've got another spot that I can send more workers out to do things. So... In the solo game, using this, instead of copying other players, because there's no player, I could instead copy any of these abilities in the display and then discard them from the game. So, that means, um, instead of starting out by playing, I could say, hey, you know what I'd like my first action to be? I'd like to go on ahead and activate. ka -chunk. Um, which means either I get one good or I copy one of these because there are no other players. I can't copy them, so I can copy one of these. I could get one food, two gear, two gear, a food and a crystal, or two books. And I think I like copying this one. I'm going to get myself one food and a second crystal. So now I've got two wilds and a food. And remember, if I were copying another player, they would get to take that card, put it in their discard pile. But in the solo game, I just remove the card and um, draw a new replacement. And that was my first turn. My, now, and again, if I were playing multiplayer, I would get to do things. I could do this, and then I could play a card. Or I could do this, and then I could explore, or whatever. I couldn't do this and do it again, because it's already activated. It's a little bit different in the solo game, uh, because I'm not limited to just two turns uh, in a row, and then other players go. I just keep going until I run out of time. And the things that make me run out of time is, every time I play a card, the timer moves forward once. Every time I hibernate, the timer moves forward twice. Once the timer timer hits 20, it's game over for me. So activating the switch or doing any kind of exploration or building does not uh, trigger, does not do the passage of time. So I go again because I'm playing solo. I, I don't take two actions and then another player and then wait for my turn again. I just keep going until I run out of time. So now 
I've got some food. I've got some more resources, thanks to my Super Switch. I think it's time to explore. Remember, I've already decided I kind of want to go this way. So, if I look at this terrain tile, if I explore this, I will score four points. I will get to recruit one more follower. Um, although, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't quite have enough. Um, I need two knowledge. And remember, I could have the crystals stand in for that. But I need two food. I have one food. But also, I'm considered to be starting here in this chasm, which means to be able to reach all the way over here, I have to be able to skip over this building space, um, which means I have to spend one food. So to be able to explore this, I actually need one, two, three food plus two knowledge. I don't have enough after all. So... What am I going to do then? Well, before I explore, I'm going to play my first follower. Hey, you look like a nice evolved human from 5,000 years in the future. How about instead of you giving me a, an upgrade, you give me a couple of food so I can start exploring. That means if I want this, I have to play it into one of my two top slots. I'll play this. I just got two more food. All right. And because I played a card... The timer starts ticking. Remember, in the solo game, every time I play a card, it goes up one. Every time I hibernate, it goes up two. Uh, um, really, that's the only big change. Structurally, in the multiplayer game, you get to do two actions, and then your turn is over. In the solo game, you just get to keep doing actions over and over again, and the timer ticks down. All right, so now I've got two food. Now... I can make it. I needed one, two, three food to be able to reach here. I needed two knowledge. And what do you know? I've got two knowledge in the form of crystals. Anytime I want, I can convert two crystals or any number of crystals in anything I want. So if I do that, I've got everything I need. So let's go on ahead and do it. Let's revive. I spend one food to increase my range, to skip over this, because remember, at the beginning, I started here. And then I spend two food and two knowledge to flip that tile. Woohoo! Okay, let's take a closer look, and what do we find? Remember, first of all, we score four victory points. Before I forget, let's go on ahead and score those points. Woohoo! I'm on my way to 50. I get to recruit one of these followers. They go directly into my hand. And so I'm upgrading my faction, my tribe, to be able to do more stuff. Plus, we flip this, and as predicted, we knew there was going to be a water source here. Here's the water source. And um, building next to this water source lets us find an ancient crate full of goodies which uh, I did not take the objective that wants me to find crates, but I still want to build next to this anyway because I've got the objective that wants me to build next to water. So now when I flip this, I have to decide how do I want to lay this out. I can lay it like that or like that. And honestly... Taking a look, I think this is the smart way to go for reasons that will become clear very soon. So I'm going to place this like that. I got five points, and pretty much, as you can see on the back of all these, every time you explore any location, you get some points, you get to recruit somebody, and that's your reward for exploring, and then you reveal something of the world. Okay, and who am I going to recruit from all of these fine folks? I kind of have to admit, I'm drawn to this one. Because this one can either give me two gears, which you need gears to be able to build, and to be able to unlock the secrets of the water sources, plus just uh, increase your overall standing, you need to build buildings, and you need the gears for that. But also, the bottom side of this says, hey, if I activate through the bottom side, I score a victory point, which is just how you win, and I get to activate the special power of my tribe. In my starting deck of cards, I only had two ways. I could activate my special power, which is get free resources, more of them as I get next to more lakes. So, um, uh, you know, getting an extra one of these, I think I'm going to go for that one. So I've recruited this, goes directly into my hand. All right, and boom, there's a new person waiting to be recruited. And that was an explore action. You pay the food and sometimes knowledge uh, to be able to reach out to a space. You get some points, you get you recruit, and you reveal more of the world. Now, I should say, in a multiplayer game, it's always kind of dangerous 
to explore. Because, remember, on a multiplayer game, you get to do two actions on a turn. And if your second action is to explore, then that means all the other players around the table get first dibs at all the goodies of that location. So you've always got to be a little bit nervous. But in the solo game, I'm not racing against other players. I'm racing against the clock. So I'm not too terribly worried. Because here's the thing, folks. I made a wonderful place by laying this down like this. If any player were to build right here on this sandy spot, whenever you build a building, you have to build in these sand areas, you get the benefit of every terrain type next to it. So this is two forests and a uh, plains and a mountain. This would be a huge payday that players would be fumbling over themselves to be able to grab. So, normally, if you're going to explore, you want that to be your first action on a turn, so your second action could be to get in there. But that means you have to have enough stuff ready before you even explore. I ran out and I explored willy-nilly, and I would probably pay the penalty, because chances are somebody would grab that space right now, and then somebody would grab that space, and maybe even that space, and get the benefit of the uh, reward, because there's only so much terrain. And while this is not an area majority game, it is definitely a race game where everybody's racing to try to get the best stuff. But since I'm playing solo, I, uh, I can be a little bit more casual, a little bit more laid back. So, that was it. I've done an explore. And remember, in the solo game, only playing cards and um, uh, hibernating moves the timer forward. So I can keep going. And I think it's time to play a card. How about this one I just played? So, I'll go on ahead and lock this in. And that gets me two gears. A one and a two. Now, unfortunately, to build a small building, I need at least three gears. You can see small buildings cost three gears. Big buildings cost five gears. I've got two. That is not enough to build. And again, if I had revealed this without having gears on hand, I'd be terrified. Ah, i got to get gears before the, all the good spots go. But I'm not worried about that. That was my turn. I played a card. The timer moves forward. And now I need one more gear. Here's the problem, though. I could play this to get my third gear and some food, but I can't because all these spaces are occupied. No! Now, remember, if I were playing with other players, chances are one of them probably would have flipped their switch to say, hey, I want to grab a bunch of food, which means they would have cleared this space out for me, and then I could um, send another follower there. But since I'm playing alone, I cannot do that. I can do something else with this card, though. I can say, hey, how about I slot it in the bottom space and get myself a crystal. And now that means I've got effectively three gears because I've got two and a crystal. A crystal is wild. And that means we've moved forward again. I've played three followers so far. We moved up three of my 20 steps. Time is ticking. Okay, I think my next turn should be building. I would like to build a small building, which remember costs three gears. So there's one, two, plus my crystal, which stands in. And so I can build. Now, at this point, because I have not established a foothold out in the world, I'm still considered to be down here. So, if I don't want to have to spend extra food to extend my range, then I need to build directly adjacent. And that's cool, because this is exactly where I want to build. Right there. Um, because I made this spot. Remember, if I were playing other players, I would have had to be sure that I could get there before somebody else could do it. But as it is, by building here, I get access to these four, the resources of these forests, the resource of this mountain, and the resource of this um, prairie. And what does that mean? Well, if we come over here, I haven't actually looked at my board very much yet. There are a whole bunch of machines over here waiting to be unlocked. And they get unlocked by getting access to the resources of the upper world. Remember, I had access to two forests, which means I move my little forest meter up one, two. And because it made it to this spot, I have unlocked this machine. Um, which means I could spend energy. And I start with one energy, and I could use that machine now. So that's pretty cool. And I take this token and I put it here on my progress track, which means I've now got one victory. If the game ended right now, I get one victory point. The more of these machines I unlock, the more of these steps along of uh, making progress, the more points I have at the end of the game. Plus, I can earn energy, I can earn artifacts, etc. 
So I got to move up two on the green because remember, I built next to two green. I also built next to a mountain, a gray, and a plains, a yellow, which means I move up one on my yellow track and one on my mountain track. And boom, boom, boom. I have actually unlocked three machines. And at any time I want on my turn, it's a free action to spend the energy I've got to use any of these. This one says, hey, convert any normal thing into a crystal. And then a crystal can, of course, become anything. This one says, hey, increase your range when you're exploring or building or populating, uh, which means you basically have to spend one less food to reach long distances. Remember I had to pay an extra food to explore? If I had had this unlocked, I could have spent energy instead of that extra food. And this one says, hey, somebody who's blocking one of your worker spots, go on ahead and discard them so that you open up a space and you'll be able to get back to that worker quicker. So I now have access to three additional powers. In addition to all the regular stuff I can do on my turn, I can also do any one of those actions. And over the course of the game, you will get more and more energy. You will unlock more and more of these engines. And your turns can get bigger and more powerful. You know, when you're playing multiplayer and you're just doing two actions, uh uh-uh. You're often doing two actions plus maybe a couple of engine activations to trigger all kinds of bonus combo chains and all that. Although, starting out slow, I've just now got access to all my basic. And also, in the future, if I want to explore, populate, or build, I now reach from this space because I'm not underground anymore. Now, this is our base of operations. So, if I wanted to expand to this space, I would need to spend one food. Whereas before, if I was here, I would have needed to spend two food to expand to that space. So, okay. So, that was that. I have built. And uh, uh, since I'm playing solo, I'll just keep on going. And I think... I would like to get this card played. But if I play it here for its bottom effect, convert three things into three other things... I have no things. I'm going to play it for its top effect. So before I do this, I'm going to spend energy to activate this machine I just unlocked to send one of my followers... Which one? The gear or the food follower? Whichever one of these I send to the discard pile, I'm going to get access to that power more quickly. I think I want my food guy back quicker. So I'm going to spend energy to tell you, hey, you're done working. Go to the discard pile. Fine. And now I've got a slot I can go on ahead and put this in here, which moves the timer forward, and I get a 1 and a 1. So the more knowledge I have, I need knowledge to explore some places, and I also need knowledge to send my people out. And remember, that's one of the things I very much want to do. Although I haven't talked about this very much. There's another trick to this. At the end of the game, there I have the potential to get a point for every lake, or every water source I build next to, a point for every... Meeple, every population center I refill, and a point for every two upgrades I get. But that's only if I find artifacts. There, as part of setup, you can see there's a bunch of artifacts up here. These are very mysterious sources of power. Nobody really knows where they come from. Are they part of the old world from 5,000 years ago? Well, we live in that world. Those don't look familiar to us, do they? Very mysterious stuff. You might want to play through the campaign and learn a little bit more about them. But anyway, all we know is the function of getting these artifacts is a multiplier. If, at the end of the game, I have all three purple artifacts, then I get one times three points for every lake. Actually, did I say three? I meant four. Uh, basically, I get to score this once, but for every personal artifact, I get to score it again. So if I get all three of those purples, each lake I've gotten to is worth four points at the end of the game. And again, that, in a multiplayer game, becomes another race. Because there's a bunch of different ways to grab these artifacts, like scoring a certain number of points, um, or uh, building in certain locations. Uh, sometimes the uh, lakes can get you access to it. There's all kinds of ways to get those artifacts. And if I've decided right from the get-go, I am all about trying to get to those lakes. I need to be all about trying to get those purple artifacts too. The other important thing about these artifacts is, in a multiplayer game, they're the timer. Once they've all been grabbed, that triggers the end of the game. And everybody except for the player who, who triggered the end of the game gets one more turn. Remember, in a solo game, uh, if I grab all of these, well, hey, I could keep playing. It's the timer I'm racing against not having grabbed all of those. And um, hey, I, I, I would like to grab all of them because they're multipliers for all the things I could be doing. But uh, that's something I need to be thinking about also. 
So, okay, so far you've seen me do a bunch of stuff. I've played four cards, I've explored, I've built, I've unlocked some machines and used a machine. And um, now, I have not put any people out in the world yet, but to do that, you need knowledge. And I have one measly knowledge. To train my first follower, I need two knowledge at least, plus I have to be within range of a city. Uh, although I, right now, there is this city. Um, that I could uh, extend to. Actually, there's two cities right next to each other randomly. That's interesting. But it doesn't matter because I do not have enough knowledge. So I think I have pushed my, um, my followers as far as I can. Instead of doing any more actions, it's time to uh, hibernate, which means the timer moves forward too. And I'm already a third of the way through the game. Yikes. I'm at seven. Remember when the timer hits 20. And you know what? Hibernation might be a good time to take a break here. And if you'd like to continue watching the run-through and see how that hibernation works and see how the game really starts ramping up when I bring those other cards into play, you can go ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, or you can just go straight to Final Thoughts if you like. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.